Everyone, this is Three Questions with Steve Paramore. Music man. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm actually pretty excited to be here with Steve Paramore. Steve is actually, uh, is it assistant or associate superintendent? What is that? Assistant. What's assistant. Yeah. What's, assistant what's superintendent. What's the difference between assistant and associate? Do you know? Uh, probably not a lot. Uh, so we have, we have three in our district. So one is, uh, curriculum focused. One is, uh, student services focused. So special education, and then I am, uh, human resources and operations. So, um, but my background is, uh, in, in administration is as I was an assistant principal, um, at the middle school level. And then previous to that, I was an elementary physical education teacher. So, uh, this is my 19th year of education and uh my my four years of undergrad were uh were in business administration so um when i graduated from florida southern college in lakeland florida i really had a focus on playing golf at the next level and uh i got married and my wife was a teacher and i kind of needed to do something for a bit and she's like you should substitute teach and uh, I, I did it and I fell in love with it. And I started coaching golf at our high school and uh, ended up getting my, uh, my, they have a bachelor's plus program at Ashland University. So I started into that. And before you know it, I got a master's in curriculum and instruction. I got my teaching license. Uh, I fell into a, a, a full year long-term sub situation for an elementary physical education teacher. And from that point on, I have been in love with education since. So, well, and, and Steve, I was, when I was just uh, actually out at your school district, and it was like amazing to actually see. Uh, I don't know, my camera is just going off, and I'm so sorry. This is the inter Florida internet all alligators wrecking everything right now? So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, it, just to see your positivity, and you're actually going to be uh, it, it's interim superintendent. Uh, right. You know coming up right away so that's awesome and uh, you got that little ashland arrows and i'll give a little yeah. shout out to ashland arrows right Go it was, arrows. Like, it was yeah. awesome to, to to be with you guys um you know when i was just out there uh recently so um one of the things that i i really appreciated about connecting with you connecting with the community is really that focus on like how do we actually lead? And so we're going to talk about that more in the podcast, talk about your transition um, into this new role, uh, what that's like, some of uh, the excitement you have, or maybe some of the trepidation we'll see. Uh, but obviously no trepidation, right? Because you're going to crush it in this space too. So that, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Um, so we're going to start off with three questions. And uh, the first question I have, and you have like a, a pretty, you know, all over the place background in education and so you've connected you know i know you're going to want to know your wife as the teacher that inspired you right away but yeah i don't know yeah. <laughs> maybe that's i don't know I've, I've never had anyone say that yeah maybe but um when you look back at your education career who is it now nah, maybe I put you on the spot now you have to say your wife i don't know so uh who is a teacher that inspired you um you, you know whether it's a student whether it's a colleague uh that really inspired you in education and why I, uh, I will give a shout out to my wife, who is a phenomenal elementary art teacher, and she's been doing it for uh, much longer than I have. But uh, I, I look back at my um, elementary, middle school, high school career. I graduated from Ashland High School. I spent all of my life in Ashland City Schools as a student um, and had countless um, phenomenal teachers. But I have also had the opportunity to work with many of the teachers and call them colleagues that I had. Um, and one that sticks out to me is still teaching in our district. Uh, he taught uh, advanced composition. And I look back at my the influence that he had on us. I may not have realized it at the time, but um, he was a phenomenal uh, English teacher, I guess, in general, because he also taught other, um, I guess, preps in, in that area. So he was English literature. I had him for a, a course called Literature uh, of Justice, which was, you, you studied current events and things like that. It was a really cool class where you could spend a lot of your time debating, um, which kids in high school love to do that. Um, but I look back at how thorough he was in advanced composition, which is essentially writing papers, and how important that is um, not only in my undergrad, but 
in my graduate work. Um, there's things that he taught us that I leaned on, but what's really genuine about this individual is he was just so honest and real. And what I mean by real was he would every once in a while, he might swear. And as a high school student, you're like, oh, wow, you know, I've done that. So he actually does it. Um, and I'm sure he still swears a little bit. Uh, but he, um, what I've appreciated now is I'm more of a colleague and uh, been in the, in the district as an employee that he's in, is he is unbelievably multi-talented. He runs our school musical and our musical program that we put forth is uh, I haven't been to Broadway before, but it's the closest thing I've ever seen to Broadway. And they take it so seriously that we have um, students in some of those county schools that you worked in, George, that actually mm -hmm. transfer to our school district just to be in the musical program. And he was also the boys soccer coach of uh, one of the one of the best soccer teams my graduating year. Um, we had had some success in golf. Um, and I was a member of the golf team, but a lot of my friends were on the soccer team and they made it all to the, all the way to the final four in our state tournament, um, my, my senior year. And he was the head soccer coach. So I was always in so I'm a huge soccer fan. I think, I mean, I love all sports, mm -hmm. but soccer is a lot of fun to watch. It's a lot of fun to play. And, uh, I was always impressed with, uh, how he led them. And he was a little bit crazy, which I think also is what kind of draws me to him as well, because he's got so much pizzazz and um, he's infectious. And um, and that's no disrespect to all of the wonderful teachers that I've had um, at Ashland City Schools in my time growing up and, and teachers that I've worked with and colleagues that uh, that I work with now or even people that I, you know, in, in a management role. Um, or a leadership role that, that I get to see on a daily basis. Um, he really sticks out to me. Um, I'll throw a shout in, shout out to my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Solers, though, because um, I get some compliments every once in a while for my handwriting. And it, oh, that, yeah, never, that never would have happened without Mr. Solers in sixth grade. Uh, he was he was a drill sergeant on our handwriting. So I, I got to give All him right. a shout so out. We got like three shouts, including... So who is the, who is, what's the teacher that, what's his name? His the, name's uh, Rich Wasowski. Rich and Mr. Spillers and your wife. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Little shout out. I actually, um, it, it's interesting that you said, like, some of the things that you learned, um, you didn't really understand why they were so important at the time. Like, I always talk about my phys ed uh, coach, or phys ed teacher who was my high school football coach. And I remember him saying to me, when I wanted to be captain of the football team, that, you can be ready to lead all you want, but are someone worth following? And I, I'll yeah. never forget that. But it's interesting because at the time he made me captain. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't care what he said. Like I'm captain. I, I achieved what I was trying to achieve. And it was like 15, 20 years later that I actually realized how valuable that was. Right? Like yeah. I, that how important that advice was. But it, like some of the best lessons that we actually ever learn in school don't hit us until later on in life. And like Absolutely. the other part of it too is that. You know, the whole notion of like, don't sweat the small stuff, but a lot of times the small stuff is actually what distinguishes, you know, right. excellence, right? Like that's what actually creates that. So I, I love that. And, you know, I, I'm sure I, I, I'm all about, the, it's kind of funny when we talk about like the crazy infectious teacher, like we think at the time and then we kind of realize they're brilliant later. Like a lot right. of times, it's, right. like sometimes you're just, you know, sometimes you're just right. crazy. From, from, a, from a management role now, and I, and I realize this, he never missed. He never missed. And I Love think that. about, um, you know, I read a lot of stuff from Kevin DeShazo and he talks about, you know, you talked about be worth following. Kevin DeShazo talks about that all the time, but mm -hmm. also keep showing up. I mean, regardless of your circumstances, keep showing up, keep chopping wood and you're going to reap the rewards. Um, you know, obviously with the pandemic and things like that, we've had, you know, lots of people get sick and, and, and that affects you, you having a substitute teacher in there sometimes is, is, is awesome because they're good humans. But, uh, we, I just think about how many of my teachers were always there. I don't remember, um, absences and, you know, Rich Wasowski never mm -hmm. misses even, even now. And it's super impressive. And, uh, he's gotta be at, 
gosh, 31 years of education. He's still super young. He's a runner, so he's uh, he's in great shape. And uh, it's how you keep young. I try to absolutely, do it yeah, yeah, man, for it. sure, for sure. I definitely. All right, it. so so you you are. I find you to be, and it's one of the reasons I asked. I find you to be a really infectious leader. I find you to be very aspirational, positive, leading. You know, not. I think a lot of times people think that. If you're like really positive, you ignore problems. I actually think it's the opposite. I actually think you address them and find a way forward. That's that's to me. I've kind of really felt that in your personality. And so I'm sure you've been influenced by really great administrators, you know, um, people that you work with currently. I'm sure you'd, you'd say that too. But like when you think of like a great administrator, who's someone you think of and why? So when I went into administration, there's there's no question who this person is for me. Uh, so I, I did. Uh, let's see. Uh, 12, 12 years of teaching. And my first job as an administrator was the assistant principal at Ashland Middle School. And it was the middle school that I went to the next year, we were bulldozing that building and going mm -hmm. into uh, a new state of the art building. So this was a building that was built in 1914. At one time, it was the high school. And it was so old, it had a bomb shelter for obviously being around in wow. the 1940s, we were worried about we were worried about that in, in America. And this building had unbelievable bones, but it was old. And instead of building additions onto it, they built up. So it was essentially four stories around a courtyard. It was a pretty awesome building. It had a lot of history. But I I was interviewed for the position over the summer months. And um, my, my head principal, Matt White, um, who is now... Um, we spent, um, I was assistant principal alongside him uh, for five years, five and a half years. And he literally became my best friend. And I don't know that that many people get an opportunity in education to call their 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 colleague their 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 best friend. Now, obviously, I'm sure that happens, but in your first time as an administrator, um, the leadership standards, the leadership qualities, what we were interested in. We both love basketball. His sons both play college basketball. One's now coaching at UMass Lowell. We just had so many similar interests. Um, he, he's not hugely into golf, but appreciates it. So I guess that was the one kind of difference. But we were both into, you know, somewhat trying to keep ourselves in shape because we know we're in this for the long haul and we got to be in shape. And uh, what we really shared a passion for was he held my role for quite a bit of time before, uh, I think he was 10 years as the assistant principal before I became his assistant. So he knew what my role, I mean, the discipline aspect of it, the, um, the relationships that you have to build with staff members through evaluation process. Um, I really started to learn a, a ton about the curriculum and he was having to learn a lot about that because he didn't spend as much time in it um, in, in his role as the assistant principal. And then when he transitioned to head principal and um, just a, a man of faith and positive shared the same positivity I did. So I just felt like we always exuded the same standards no matter who we talked to it wasn't like staff members felt like if they went to him they were going to get a different answer if they went to me they were going to get their way or anything like that like we were such a united um group and we had one other uh, assistant principal that kind of split between our building and another building um who was a veteran guy he he was uh, really into data but uh, matt white is uh, just became a dear friend uh, we, we did some of the craziest things. Like I always felt like our, our motto was, I mean, there wasn't anything we just wanted to say no to. Like the staff wanted to wear sweatpants one day and we're like, well, yeah, let's do it. But we kind of tied it into, you got to give a dollar to United way. Um, we, we would do, we would did more dress up days than I think had ever occurred, uh, at the middle school because that's, that's that age group. We did a, a ton of staff versus student things because you got you got to do stuff with them. Um, I spent a lot, and he he was so supportive of it. I spent a lot of time with kids after school because I felt like okay, 
if you weren't getting stuff done, that that was on me. I was going to I was going to make sure you were after school with me. He was super supportive of that, where, you know, sometimes administrators might be like, lay that back on the teacher. I was like, no, man, like I live locally. My wife's my wife's cool with it. She's not going to be like, you're not spending time with me. So we we would do things after school a lot longer than maybe what the average bear would do it. Um, but we always, we always put leadership at a premium. We wanted, we wanted teachers to be leaders and we wanted students to be leaders, not just the kids in student council, not just the kids that were on the football team. Um, we did a ton of stuff to try to mirror what our high school does. Our high school has this thing called lunch bunch and it's Mm. just celebrating birthdays and bringing guitars in and playing ping pong, all that kind of stuff. We tried to incorporate that, um, in those those four, four and a half years we were at the new building during my tenure as assistant principal um, to where we took stuff like off of Jimmy Fallon, like uh, Jimmy Fallon did like the, the egg roulette where, you know, half the, half the yeah. bin of eggs is, is a raw and uh, half the, uh, half the, half of them are hard boiled. So we would just do stuff like that in the middle of the, the cafeteria and not think twice about it. I remember doing it and then having like an IEP meeting to go to afterwards. <laughs> So it's kind of a, kind of a tough scene for my hair, but, um, yeah, like he's, he's my biggest, biggest influence in administration. Um, and obviously I have tons of colleagues, um, and, and folks that I'm super close with, but if I was going to single out one dude that has inspired me, has made me want to be the best version of myself. Um, and he's now the superintendent at a, uh, a small school district in Northwest Ohio called Hopewell Loudon. Um, he, uh, he's up there now. Um, it was, it was tough. It was tough for him. It was tough for me. I knew my aspirations were to be, um, a superintendent somewhere. So I had the opportunity to become assistant superintendent in our district. Um, you know, I was given that opportunity by our superintendent. Um, and you know, I, a lot of me felt like I left him high and dry cause we had such a good thing going. Mm-hmm. But, but what I think I inspired him to do was to get his superintendent's license. And, uh, and now he's a superintendent before I am. So, um, we're, we're going to give a little shout out, Matt White. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, that, that, There's so much stuff that I, I love that you actually shared there too. I think, um, I think of one of the people I worked with Archie Lillico, he was a mentor for me when I was assistant principal, he was my, uh, he worked, I worked as him, for him as a principal and really kind of having that focus like we and i think that close connection really mattered for us um but it wasn't that we always agreed and i think that was a really important aspect but we always ensured that we were on this like we, we weren't like it's pretty easy to try to like divide and conquer admit against each other and i thought that was something that we were really like hey you know at the end of the day especially when he was principal i was like he's like you got to back me up whether you agree or not like I, at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, the superintendent's calling me, not you. So you got to kind of back me up on this stuff. I'm going to listen to yeah. you. And it was like, it wasn't that it was like it's my way or the highway. It was always conversations that we had of that too. I love that you, you know, spent time with students that struggle because, you know, having administrators um, do that, sometimes they just need a connection outside of the classroom. Right. And I think the teacher sometimes needs to be honest, you have a break from some 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 yes. kids who get really frustrated with. And it's not because they don't love them, they don't care for them, but you know, there's sometimes we just need to like I'm not a big fan of the like, you know, we gotta do everything for every student every single day. Like sometimes it's kind of like if you're having an argument, you know, with your spouse, sometimes you just kind of not you just need to not talk for a little bit. You just need a little space, right? And it's the same with you know, or some of our students, we just need like step away and, you know, come back the next day. But also it's great. You know, we want to ensure that our kids feel supported in different avenues. And I think you know, having that breather is really powerful. So I, I love that. So Steve, you have a, a, a long history in education. I've done a ton of different roles, had a lot of great mentors, obviously. But if you can go back to your first year of teaching, what is one piece of advice that you'd give to yourself? I got great advice um, about furthering myself in, in professional development. What I, my advice I would give myself my first year of teaching would be, I would have done more after school things. Like I was so wrapped up in coaching after I was like, I, man, I hope I get a prep at the end of the day so I can get to get to coaching. Like I was so jazzed about coaching. I loved, I loved teaching elementary PE because I love, I love that age group. 
Um, but I feel that <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty. But I feel that I I needed to involve myself more in what some of the teachers might have been doing after school. I needed to dive into more of like I tried to do a lot of cross curricular things because I had a really good administrator that told me, hey, when I was a PE teacher. Uh, I did a bunch of cross curricular things, so I would try to engage myself more of that that kind of stuff. Um, you know, try to figure out okay, your the kids were in a penguin unit, so we would do some do some crazy stuff with scooters and um, try to carry balls around on our feet, like you know, mama penguins do. Um, <laughs> but but I I would engage myself more with the regular classroom teachers more than so you didn't just feel like. You know, some, you know how teachers are sometimes at the elementary level. Thank God I'm giving them to you. I need my 40 minute break right now. This is perfect timing. Like I, I needed to have more collegial conversation with them other than, well, how do they get a good grade in your class? But my class, they're struggling in. Like I needed to be able hmm. to have a better explanation for them other than, well, they like my class, right? Because I that's not that's not good for a classroom teacher to hear that right. well they just they just don't like what you're doing and i mean because they're not going to understand that so i would definitely tell myself that i would definitely tell anybody else that's a young specialist and i say specialist um, because you have art music and pe that are typically standard in most elementaries across america um and i, I, mean, I maybe in canada too i don't want to speculate but um that those are three things that i think are vital uh, for the whole child, but sometimes classroom teachers forget that that you know we have state standards and that we have a really solid curriculum. Same with art and music, and and genuinely those types of things become the main interests of kid kids anyways. Is either sports, music, art, uh, or they're just close close things that they relate to. Um, but obviously, you know we're we're pushing literacy, we're pushing strong math skills. Uh, I'd love to see us push more leadership skills, even at young ages, because I think that will be beneficial. Um, and that's one of the initiatives that I want to go forth with uh, here here coming up. But yeah, I would definitely, I would have empowered Steve Paramore, the first year teacher, to engage himself more with classroom teachers other than, hey, how you doing today? Everything going on? Did you have a great weekend? Right? It needs to be more, what are you doing in your classroom? How can I be more helpful with with what you're trying to get across to your students yeah and i think that that sometimes some of those conversations i like typically we would have conversations in the staff room when i was a teacher that didn't really have anything to do with education and that's okay like that's totally fine because i think sometimes we just need to, to have that break you know catch our breath and uh things like that too uh, i actually remember um a conversation very similar i was really struggling with a student and actually asked another teacher on staff like your relationship is really good with this student and like where where like what am i missing here? like what am i doing wrong and so and i know this sounds weird sometimes it's just like personalities just don't match right and i think that like um not every kid likes every single teacher and that's 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 sometimes that's okay right like as long as everyone's respectful and things like that too i think that that really matters but um, I, I just remember having a conversation with that teacher, getting some advice um, to really kind of connect and like doing that. And it, it helped me tremendously because you it, it, sometimes you're so wrapped up in like your own world. You can't you don't notice some of the issues that you are causing yourself. And she gave a different perspective and she did it in a very respectful way because she knew she, I think she appreciated that I asked. Like just said, like, yeah. hey, I, I need help with this. So I really appreciate this, Steve. And I appreciate your perspective. Yeah. And like I said, I really love, you know, how positive you are, you know, looking at leadership for kids every single day as well as your staff. And so uh, I, I'm so appreciative you took time out of your day. You got a football game to go to tonight, too. And yeah, you're yeah. doing this before. And I love that you're kind of living what you're talking about. So, Steve, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you, everyone. Right. for listening. Thank you, George. Appreciate it.